you think someone without an education like you can teach? Idiocy is contagious, so stay away from me. I was tutoring my niece when my sister-in-law Tiffany started yelling at me. Why do you even associate with such people? You'll end up just an uneducated and foolish if you're not careful. I was treated like a germ, less than human, and I reached my breaking point. Enough is enough. Do you have any idea who you have to thank for our comfortable life? It's Katie, doing all the chores around here. At this, Tiffany exploded in anger. What? Why is mom even defending this woman? It's obvious someone as stupid as her would only be fit for housework. It's not just the housework. She works hard and contributes to the household income. You, on the other hand, contribute nothing and just squander away. Show some gratitude. She's working? This idiot? As if she could hold down a real job. With that, she grabbed my laptop that was nearby and threw it out the window. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Don't act so high and mighty with that pretend job of yours. Get out already. I rushed outside to retrieve my laptop, but it was broken and wouldn't even start up. It contained all the important data I needed for work. To lash out at objects over a personal vendetta? How childish. I couldn't bear living with such a person any longer. I had endured for the sake of maintaining peace with my husband and mother-in-law, but I had reached my limit. I left a note and returned to my parents' house. My name is Katie, and I'm 29 years old. I married Joseph last year. Initially, we planned to live together in an apartment close to our workplaces. However, Joseph was worried about his mother, Jessica, who had injured her knee. Jessica's knee pain, likely from years of standing jobs, was so severe that she needed breaks even for short walks. Her daily life was becoming increasingly difficult, so we decided to move in with Joseph's family. Jessica was delighted when we offered to live with her. Katie's moving in too? That's wonderful. Jessica is a gentle person and always treated me kindly. However, there is one issue that bothers me. It was the presence of my sister-in-law, Tiffany. Tiffany judges people based on their education and is discriminatory. The first time we met at a family dinner, her attitude changed completely when she learned about my educational background. Katie didn't go to college? Unbelievable. I wonder why Joseph chose someone like her. Hey, Tiffany, cut it out. Why should I? I graduated from a prestigious private university and Joseph went to a national one. We are both from educated, well-bred circles. Why would you marry someone with such low education? Tiffany, that's enough. I'm sorry for my daughter's rude remarks. Jessica apologized, but I was too shocked to say anything. My mother looked down embarrassed. I was raised by a single mother. My father died in a traffic accident when I was young, and my mother worked tirelessly to raise me. However, her job, lacking formal qualifications, were low-paying and life was hard. That's why I gave up on going to college. I considered scholarships, but the thought of repayment meant that even with extra income, our life wouldn't be much easier, so I decided to find work myself. Fortunately, I was hired as an office worker at an accounting firm where I began my job. The director, Daniel, was very kind and even suggested to me a college non-graduate. Why don't you try obtaining a certification? If you're all uh, willing, I'll support you, he said. His words delighted me and I immediately responded. Obtaining a certification would mean a raise in my salary and I could elevate my mother's hardships. So I studied diligently and earned my accountant certification. My husband was aware of my struggles, so he explained them to Tiffany, but she remained cold and dismissive. I hope the child you bring into this world isn't as foolish as you are. Her words filled me with shock and anger. Why must I be demeaned so much for my educational background? But causing a scene could jeopardize my marriage, so I stayed silent and hung my head in response to Tiffany's constant belittling. Hey, Katie! Isn't the meal ready yet? Such inefficiency must be due to your stupidity. Uh, I'm sorry. How does it feel not to have gone to college? Isn't it embarrassing when everyone else goes? Poor thing, your parents must be embarrassed too. Tiffany would say these things with a nasty smile, even making pointed remarks to her niece Megan in my presence. Megan, don't end up like her, okay? You need to attend a good university. Let's start by getting into a prestigious middle school. Um, okay. Megan was a quiet child, always hiding behind Tiffany. 
Tiffany was determined to get Megan into a good school, focusing on the famous private middle school, where she worked part-time as an instructor, choosing not to obtain her teaching certification because she didn't want to do anything other than teach. Stupid people are meant to be ridiculed all their lives. You don't want that, do you, Megan? So make sure you get into a good school. Tiffany would say this deliberately in front of me, making me clench my fists in frustration. Yet I held back my retort concerning my husband and Jessica and not wanting to cause them any trouble. I used to see Tiffany only on Thanksgiving or Christmas and I could manage that much without any problems. I thought that, however, the situation escalated when Tiffany unexpectedly decided to move back into my husband's family home with her daughter Megan announcing, Mom, I got divorced. Starting today, we're living here. What? Divorce? Why all of a sudden? I was so mad at my husband. He only agreed to pay $60 in alimony, which is just unbearable. It's easier to move back home. No need to worry about living expenses. Tiffany made herself comfortable on the couch, leaving me and Jessica in shock. Katie, make sure to dry the laundry by tomorrow. Oh, and that skirt needs dry cleaning. Tiffany began treating me as if I were her servant. Could you possibly handle the dry cleaning yourself? What? You can't even manage this simple task with your low education. You hardly earn anything, so at least do this much. Truly useless. In this manner, Tiffany continued to do no housework and dumped all her chores on me. It would be one thing if it was just extra homework. However, Tiffany began to engage in clear acts of harassment. I noticed that the laundry had what seemed to be deliberately placed stains from a permanent marker. The stains were stubborn, and despite my desperate efforts to scrub and wash them out, they wouldn't budge. As Tiffany sighed over the stained clothes, she taunted, Ah, oh, can't even do housework. I guess people with low education really are worthless. They're useless at everything. Day by day, the stress from Tiffany's attitude piled up until I finally confided in my husband. I am already balancing work and household chores, but her deliberate messes only add to my load. It's becoming too much. I understand. I'm sorry. You're dealing with this. I'll talk to her, he assured me. Despite his tiredness from work, he listened to my complaints and immediately went to address Tiffany. His kindness lifted my spirits slightly. However, the next day, Tiffany's verbal abuse worsened. Oh, just because Joseph defended you doesn't mean you should get too comfortable. Do you think you're some princess now? It's disgusting. I never thought of myself as a princess, I replied meekly. You think if you cry, everyone will side with you? Grow up and stop flirting with men for favors. Her words were humiliating. I had never relied on my husband or any man in that way. I couldn't understand why Tiffany would say such things, filling me with rage. If being defended by my husband meant being accused of using my gender, then I would no longer rely on him. He looked at me worriedly, but given his strong-willed sister, he gradually stopped intervening in our disputes. Tiffany's troubling behavior wasn't limited to her harassment of me. Her approach to Megan's education was extreme. She seemed determined to get Megan into a prestigious middle school, sending her to tutoring almost daily. Megan, these grades are terrible. You won't get into that school with marks like these. I'm sorry? Megan would reply. If you don't improve, I'll hire a tutor. If you don't want that, then you better work harder. Um, yes. Megan looked like she was on the verge of tears. Despite attending tutoring after school every day, adding a tutor would leave her no time to play or rest. I approached Megan when Tiffany wasn't around. Um, want to study together? I can help with some things. Really? She asked. Of course. From then on, Megan and I began studying together in secret. Her comprehensions wasn't bad. With time and adjusted pacing, she managed to understand the material. Aunt Katie, I scored 80 on the test. That's wonderful. You worked so hard, Megan. I was as thrilled as if it were my own achievement, and we celebrated together. Jessica also supported us quietly, occasionally buying us cake as a treat, which the three of us shared. The time I spent with Jessica and Megan became my sanctuary, yet the peace didn't last. One holiday, I was studying with Megan as usual. Just then, Tiffany, who was supposed to be out, suddenly returned home. What are you doing? She snapped upon seeing us. We were studying together, I replied. Someone uneducated like you teaching? Impossible. Stupidity is contagious. Don't come near her. 
With that, Tiffany began to hit Megan's clothes as if slapping the stupidity away. Why would you be friendly with her? If you become as uneducated as her, it will be a disaster. It was like being treated as a germ, less than human, and I reached my limit. As I've said before, my not attending college was due to financial reasons, not a lack of intelligence, and judging everything based on education isn't right. What? Talking back to me? Tiffany retorted, her face turning red with anger. Hearing our argument, Jessica came over. What's all this commotion? I am just warning her for getting close to Megan. Don't want her catching the stupidity. Enough is enough. Do you realize who makes our comfortable life possible? It's Katie. Who does all the household chores? Jessica called. Tiffany's anger exploded at her mother's words. What? Why are you defending her? Doing chores is the least she can do since she's stupid. It's not just the chores. She's working hard, contributing financially to the household. And what are you doing? Nothing but squandering money? Show some gratitude. Working? This idiot? Like she's capable of any real job. And with that, Tiffany grabbed my laptop nearby and threw it out the window. Hey, what are you doing? Don't act so high and mighty with your pretend job. Just leave. I rushed outside to retrieve my laptop, but it was broken and wouldn't even start. It contained all the important data I needed for work. Resorting to damaging property out of spite, how childish. I couldn't bear living with such a person any longer. I had endured to keep my peace with my husband and Jessica, but I had reached my limit. I left a note and went back to my parents' house. The next day, I received numerous calls from Tiffany. However, I set my phone to block her calls and decided to ignore her completely. A week later, Tiffany showed up at my workplace with my husband. He seemed very angry, clearly believing Tiffany was 100% at fault for my leaving. He had been sending apologetic messages, but I was too upset to consider returning to his family's home. Katie, Tiffany really messed up this time. I'm sorry. Ask her to apologize. Why should I? Megan's grades have dropped since you left. Tiffany is just as affected by your absence as anyone else. I felt a tinge of guilt hearing about Megan's grades. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Come back quickly and teach Megan. I don't want to live with someone uneducated like you, but I'll endure it for Megan's sake. Tiffany's arrogant words almost dissipated my intention to return for Megan's sake. Why don't you teach her yourself? You're the one who forced her into rigorous study and then neglected her busy with your own life. I don't need advice from you. I'm making Megan study for her future. I don't want her to end up useless and uneducated like you. Tiffany, I want Megan to be like me, a graduate from a prestigious private university and working at the renowned S Academy. I want her to grow up respectable. Tiffany boasted confidently about her educational background. My husband and I were at a loss for words until the director, Daniel, intervened. You're Katie's family, right? Thank you for your support. Uh, we appreciate it. My husband replied politely. Sorry for eavesdropping, but I've been listening. Katie may not have gone to university, but she studied hard and earned her qualifications. She's now an indispensable part of my firm. Is that so? How kind of you to imply such a failure like Tiffany, who didn't even go to college. Whether or not someone went to college doesn't define their capabilities. Katie has skills that are on par with any university graduate. Tiffany frowned, clearly displeased with Daniel's praise of me. That can be right. Society values educational background. It's a fact that people with good education are more capable. Daniel sighed in frustration at Tiffany's obstinance. You mentioned working at S Academy, and your name is Tiffany, right? Yes, what about it? I see. You seem to be even worse than what I've heard. What are you talking about? Are you spreading rumors about me? No, I haven't heard anything from Katie. It's the principal and teachers at S Academy you work for who told me. The principal? Why? I'm like this. With that, the director took out a business card, revealing his title as the chairman of S Academy. The chairman? My husband and I looked at him astonished. Tiffany's demeanor instantly changed as she realized his status, her eyes darting around nervously. I've heard you push tedious tasks on to others and barely manage your own responsibilities, lacking any sense of accountability. There have also been numerous complaints about you discriminating students based on their grades. We are considering letting you go. I can't lose my job now. I've just gotten divorced. I need to support my daughter on my own. 
Tiffany pleaded desperately, but the director on face continued, Your philosophy is quite contrary to our school's missions. Given your poor work attitude, it seems we have no choice but to let you go. What? Tiffany collapsed, covering her face in despair. The next day, discussions at S Academy led to Tiffany's contract termination. She returned home pale and sequestered herself in her room. Since then, a despondent Tiffany began to take her frustrations out on Megan and Jessica. Why can't you solve even this simple problem? The exams are right around the corner. You're not going to bed until you finish all of this textbook. Megan was forced to study daily, clearly exhausted and developing dark circles under her eyes. Tiffany, enough is enough. What you're doing is clearly wrong. Shut up, mom. Don't interfere. Realizing the severity of the situation, Jessica decided to evict Tiffany. It's time for you to leave. Why should I have to leave? You have pushed Megan to this point. Leave for her sake. How could you separate me from my daughter? Unbelievable. Megan, what do you want? Stay here or leave with your mom? Megan spoke up. I don't want to leave. I want to stay here. Megan, you don't want to be with me? Being with mom is too hard. Tiffany was visibly shocked, collapsing in defeat. Jessica, without hesitation, led her out. Reflect on what you have done to Megan and Katie. With those words, she closed the front door behind her. After that, Tiffany, having lost her home and job, started working part-time as a tutor and instructor at a cram school. However, due to her abrasive personality, she faced frequent complaints and struggled to hold down jobs, leading a solitary, impoverished life. As for me, I returned to my husband's home after Tiffany left and started living peacefully. Megan, initially thought to be emotionally shocked by her mother's absence, actually began to flourish without Tiffany's oppressive presence. I told her she didn't need to continue studying for the exams, but she chose to continue, happy that she understood the material thanks to my help. My husband and I supported her studies. A year later, Megan successfully passed the entrance exam to her desired school. I remember feeling relieved that her hard work paid off. Inspired by her experiences learning from her uncle, a teacher, Megan is now diligently studying to become a teacher herself. All I wish for is for Megan to continue pursuing the path she has chosen for herself.